can't let go It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt We are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietro. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. The Genoa is on the front deck. Because guess what? <laughs> We've got... And it's not an easy task if the wind is blowing. <laughs> and we have to do this. Yeah, is somewhere, it yeah. Tea? Oh, it's on this side, is here it? it is. Look at that. My golly gosh, goodness. So this is not, not looking good. Okay. Yeah, it's like what this size, huh? About, I would say, half a meter. Huh? It's 30 centimeters. Yeah. 30 cent. Uh, yeah, it's like a lin. A, a, a ruler. Yeah. Don't know how it looks like it's is. chafing somewhere here. You yeah. see? I think it's when it's going past the radar. I think this is past going past the radar. Yeah, because it's this, yeah. smokes, yeah. this, smokes, this, smokes. We need to maybe just strengthen this a little bit, beef it up. So, we've got those sticky <laughs> on goodies. Yeah, we're going to put some of them. Yeah, it's got to be nice and flat, so it doesn't make yeah. a bubble. Yeah, this is more of this. Flat. I will, I will put it like this. Yeah, but I think we need to start somewhere here, because it's chafing here too. Okay. Now we just need to get these creases out. Okay, you good? Wait, slow. Okay, go. And this is a danger, the flogging when you raise this sail and you're not ready to fill. But Petro is doing her utmost best to get this thing under control. <laughs> we, we, we. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Here's our spinnaker and look what happened with the spinnaker. Also broken, but quick, quick, quick. Okay, release this one. Okay. Yep, that was the radar. It was the radar down that was... Look at these thunder clouds, they just appear like all of a sudden. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay, good. So, we also need to do something now with this. So. This Dyneema line also de-sleeved. This is our Cody Spinnaker Alliard or Cody Alliard. And it must be also that block there on top. Right on top. And guess who's going to climb up? Don't, don't see anyone else around. <laughs> Pietro is busy calling a grandchild again or actually a daughter in New Zealand. 
just talking. But it, oh, the weather turned for the worse. I haven't went up the mast yet because there's a lot of lightning around us. The closest was, woof, you cannot see me anymore. The closest was around six kilometers away from us. So, ah, and it's starting to rain. You, it's cold and not nice. Um, uh, so, the, <laughs> I just put the KOD in a Ford cockpit, so I still need to figure out how um, to. We need to pull a sleeve tight. I don't. Ooh, I don't think I need to do this while there's lightning in the air. <laughs> you can hear the thunder, and all of it is cloud to ground. If I look at the app, so it doesn't look good. So I, I abandoned the <laughs> let's go up the mast thing and hmm. so we will do that maybe tomorrow. Hey. Huh. While I'm here. Close the hatches. Because that rain is coming for us. And just look like that. Within a couple of seconds it went up to 33 knots maximum. <laughs> but look on the outside. It is crazy. Look at this. It's a leopard. 50. Wow. No. The rain is just coming in closer and closer. It's lighting everywhere. And it's the kind of cloud cloud to ground lightning. So it's not so it's not a good a good lighting part. It's yeah. It is rainy. So with all this rain, Starling just died. There we go. <laughs> 25, 26, 28, 30. Wow. Yeah, we are getting it now. <laughs> Oops. Anchor drag. Watch. Watch that. Whoa, We've got anchor, anchor drag along. But I think we just. Ooh. Serious lightning. We're not dragging really, I just need to set the radius correctly. Finished our cup of coffee and Petro drank the tea and we are on our way south. We started the journey officially today and we're still in Abaco. Yes, check out <coughs> lots and lots of thunder and cloud we were woken up this morning by <laughs> lightning and decided well we can just as well go but this is Abaco this is Elbow Key and most people know this that over there is Hopetown and if I look here at the, at the shore the tide is still low tide and I think the tide is coming in now but yeah we know that over there we might get some when we exit the cut it's a very narrow cut lots of water going in and out there so maybe it's going to be a little bit more fun than anticipated hopefully both engines will be able to overcome the current this is the cut over here is very shallow 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 quite deep but it's a very 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 narrow cut called the Lou cut and this is the great Abaco as you can read and that's Florida so we're now on our way to Eleuthia and yeah and the reason why we go pretty early is we definitely don't want to enter this the 
this cut over here. I just need to check that we don't run into a boat. You see? <laughs> to come in here, it's like very, 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 very narrow. <laughs> Yo, look, 25 meters. And I'm sure we saw this dog barking here the last time as well. Hello doggy! It's waving its tail! Hello! Come! Come! <laughs> jump, jump, you wanna jump. come with? So I'm going to start on this side. Oh, I think we're actually going to be quite okay. Yes. But you know... This is the quiet side, maybe we should just gun it for now. Because this is now, uh, there's also the three waves, standing waves, and then yeah. there's seven waves of quietness. So try to find the quiet ones as well. But if you don't, try to hit them at the angle. Do you see these ones? So I'm going to try and turn like this and hit them at the angle. And then you just go nicely through them. Not that bad. So I'm going to keep this angle as long as possible. If I see rocks or sand bars, then I'm going to turn the other side before I reach that. You see how easy that one was? 45 degrees is your friend. Dun, 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 dun. So before the next one, you are 45 again. Oh, wow. Do that with one hand. <laughs> Not good. Fish. <laughs> Luckily, I have feet as well. I can hold the thing with my feet. <laughs> because I rather do get pretty, pretty stuff. Look at those waves. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well done, Captain. I didn't hear anything falling inside, so <laughs> we're good. Yeah, just stay 45. Try to stay 45 degrees. And the cut can be narrow, but on as you go up, start turning. Then when you go down, you actually use the swell to push you one to the one side. No sails the whole bloody day. Also, no fish. So we've got the fishing lines out. We've got the brand new lures out. <laughs> But the chat GPT advice that we need to buy because everyone is buying these ones and catching with these lures. Nothing. Our Starlink for the last, for the whole of Bahamas, it was always flat like that. It found the satellite right or array of satellites right above us. But when we came past here, we were classified as ocean. that we are on ocean and we are on a $250 plan which says um, we can go on ocean so we don't need to be land based but it's 50 gigs not much but it's 50 gigs especially if you're a youtuber um, oh I need to go save this lure but yeah the thing is that the Starlink just notified us on, on the app that it says, it just stopped the internet. So it notified us our unexpected location, which actually meant that we didn't pay for the ocean, but we are on the ocean thing that says ocean, that's a 250 thing. But we also used up our 50 gigs while we still at land. So well, now that we're back close to the land, we are good, we have internet again. But when we're more than 12 nautical miles offshore, we actually lost the internet. So, and I say unexpected location. So the, there is a little slider that I slide and it's like $2 for a gig. And that $2 for a gig, when it activated, we had internet again somewhere out there. So it's working if you have that option. And you already went over the 50 gigabyte limit. But if you close the land, the 50 gigabyte limit 
It's just you are very restricted. Even Pietro cannot talk to the people in Australia or in New Zealand without getting interrupted all the time. You don't have priority data, and I make sure you don't have priority data. It's very calm. It's actually Compared very calm. Compared to the waves we've had on the way here, it was it swells. Yeah, yeah. Wave, but we're so already at 13 meters, so I think uh, most of the swells actually died down. But I'm going to use my glasses as well, this magic glasses that shows me. Wow, look how beautiful the water is. That's beautiful. I saw it just now. Wow. That's super make amazing. A difference, eh? And we've got dark clouds ahead, so I guess who's going to be at the anchor when it starts <laughs> raining? Mwah! Look at those clouds. So when I say drop, you drop at a massive speed. <laughs> and I just saw very earlier lots of breaking waves over there. I don't see them now. Oh, here comes a big roller. That was definitely going to break somewhere. So maybe we should look at the back and time it well. So if a big one comes through, we wait, and if it's through, we go. <laughs> or we can use it and surf. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because then it's high. Remember, it's low tide now, so we need <sighs> the height of the wave. Okay. We can do it that way. I hope I can see something. I'm not seeing much. Yeah, it's deep. So Eleutheria. We've only been to Cat Key or Cat Island, so we haven't been up here. So I think this is Spanish well wells. Look at that burst coming our way. Oh please just hold on. Let us just drop the hook. <laughs> What a pretty, 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 pretty picture. It's almost like a big lake inside of you. This is so beautiful. Well, I reckon Eleuthia was the first capital of the Bahamas before it changed to Nassau. That looks like the beginning of a water spout. A massive one. And we're in a 10, we're in a 10 meter channel. We cannot run. <laughs> Shit. I just looked up and I saw, oh my word. This is a mean cloud. But we are entering hurricane season, so big stormy weathers and yeah, challenging times. Now to pick the anchor spot. Okay, so we are at Spanish Wells in Eleuthera and we decided today is the day to go and do a little bit of sightseeing. And now we're thinking, because the captain reckons it's a three kilometer walk. That's a no. lot of walking. So while we're still thinking about cycling, Flick is making a techno video for you guys. While I'm getting things ready for us, so I think one towel should suffice, and then Trev Edges, this is just for you. I think we need to take some beers with. And the weather is pretty gloomy outside. Yeah, so as I mentioned, the weather is not looking that good. And we need to go to that island there, but we have to go all the way around there, around the corner. And with a new tapex, this is going to be a very, very wet, 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 wet dinghy ride. But we'll check the weather. It is now just after 10 in the morning, but those clouds are not looking very happy. So 
They're not predicted any wind or any rain for today. But um, yeah, it proves to be touch and go every single day. We had a huge mass of storm 4 o'clock this morning with 33 knots of wind that came out of nowhere. So we'll make a plan. We'll make it happen today. And there's a, quite a number of things to do here in Eleuthera. But we are currently in Spanish well, so the closer to us now would be... Um, now you see these clouds like everywhere, big clouds. So the closest here is the blue hole, sapphire blue hole. But we've done two blue holes already, so we'll give that one a skip. But we're going to go to Preacher's Cave. Um, it was it was a Captain William William something 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 that came here in 1648, trying to find religious peace on this little island. He came from Bermuda and then they got bashed here on the corner um, rounding Eleuthera or Spanish Wells Islands and then that is how they landed up in the cave. So we'll go see. There was like 70 odd people that lived there in terrible conditions. So yeah, that's where he actually succumbed as well. So we'll go check it out. Okay, so the weather turned out completely crappy. So we've decided to lift the anchor and guess what? It was a downpour. Look, <laughs> look and how wet it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I was at the helm this time. <laughs> yeah, you pick a fine time to leave me, Lucy. <laughs> yeah, so we, it's not going to be a preacher's cave today. <laughs> Let me just switch off the anchor alarm quickly. Okay. Off, there we go. Yeah, so we picked a very good time to raise the anchor. Let me just close the hatches. Oh, this one is so tight. I always battle with this one. So we're going to eat for the exumas now. We've tried now twice. We've tried a Luthra once. We've tried now Spanish wells. Um, and we still prefer the exumas. So we've really given it our all. But just look at this. And it's not really wet. Shoo, look at this in the front. You can't see squat. And there's an island in, over there with lots of boats in front of it. You can hardly see it. And as you all know, our washing machine is broken. So the captain decided he's going to strap his clothes onto the deck so they can get a little bit of a wash in all his nakedness. And I will blank that out. So that's a good idea of getting rid of all the salt on the boat, off on the clothes. So we're we back to hand washing. Well, mine. <laughs> but I brought in some dry clothes and a towel. Want to take a shower? <laughs> now there's plenty of shower space at the back. <laughs> and this is how quickly stuff changes when you <laughs> sail. Yeah, I know. We get all excited and we start up and everything and then. Something like this happens and you change your boat, your mind. Yeah. So now we're going to the Exumas. We've yeah. changed our minds <laughs> completely. I haven't showed you folks yet. Look at my aero garden. My basil is like growing like that on steroids. And all my different chilies. These are two different ones. I think these are jalapenos. I can't remember what the names of these ones are. And this apparently, the seeds were given to us by Frick's brother. You have to handle them with hand gloves. They are rated the second hottest chili in the world. So it's growing. So I'll have a look and look at my tomatoes. And I can see. Ooh, a ripe one. I'm not telling the captain that I'm eating the tomatoes. Mmm. And they taste super amazing. I saw that. 
No, I had my back to you. <laughs> I think this is way too much. I'm going to harvest them because I've got chicken thawing. So I'm going to make a creamy mushroom and chicken pasta tonight with basil pesto. So I've got my basil. I've got my coffee grinder. And then I've got my olive oil. I've got my sunflower kernels. I have my garlic. I'm just using the crushed garlic that I bought off the store. Parmigiani. And then my little mason jar that I'm going to put it in once it's done. Okay, so with basil, they reckon you can either use scissors, but ideally you just pinch it with your fingers, your nails. Oh, and you guys must smell this. This is such an amazing smell. And when you harvest, they say never exceed more than a third of your plant when you start trimming down on it. So, but let me show you quickly. So we've got a little screen here. And on this little screen, it's got three little indicators. So this plant, this basil plant has been going for 173 days already. And that is the current time next to it. And I'm one way off by giving it extra feed, nutrition, which is in this little bottle. So every two weeks you put two capfuls in it. So when I'm going to do it tomorrow, that's going to reset back to 14 days. And it will tell me again when to do it. This little light turns red when it needs water, so it's, this is really a no-brainer. There you go. One jar full of beautiful green, green, green basil pesto.